Riley and Kimmy show, Mike's Comics and Collectibles, OBT, Orange Blossom Trail. That's where we are. That's where we're recording this. Right next to us is Jason Fabach, comic book artist. I'm, I'm gonna, I can say this, I think. I know you can. DC legendary comic book artist. Yeah, come on, come on. Well, I, I said that. It is an honor to have you back on the Riley and Kimmy show. I got the legend here. I, I can call him that. Hey, I know he can, but yeah, I can. Yeah, you're good. You want to see me draw? Yeah, you're good. Okay, you're you're really good. Now, I, I know you're about ready to leave here to go to another signing in Tampa. So by the time this is uploaded, that's already happened. My question I wanted to ask you real quick about is a current project you're working on. I know it's probably top secret a little bit. It's under the it's under the black label. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who are watching this, listening to this. What is the Black Label? Uh, it's a new publishing division of DC that uh, they've kind of created for, you know, writers and artists to kind of explore whatever angles they want with the different characters so they can, you know, they can do something that's a little bit different off the beaten path from the regular monthly books. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to, it, some, like our book is going to be in continuity. Some of them are out of continuity, like an Elseworld story, okay. like a Dark Knight Returns or something. But uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a different kind of publishing avenue that uh, I think also affords some of the artists and writers to take a little bit more time on the work. It's not a monthly schedule, a monthly push. So it kind of gives us something to, okay. to do um, where we can, you know, take a little more time on our work maybe. So yeah. that's what attracted me to it. Now, is it designed for a more mature uh, it, reader? It can. It can. It can and it cannot. So it, it depends on whatever the team wants to really do. Okay. Yeah. Are you seeing your art, your style, your what you're doing on the book different compared to the other Batman projects? Yeah, I would say, I would say with Three Jokers, which is the book we're doing, uh, that I'm actually pushing it a little bit more mature than I normally would ever do or like to do. But I feel it fits with the, the themes and what we have going on in the story. And I, I feel that it needs to have some of that in there. So I'm kind of pushing myself in into territory that I didn't really ever think I would. Really? You know, like, or that I had said in the past, like, I wouldn't go this way. I don't want to do this kind of violence or whatever. But I believe in the story that Jeff Johns has written, and I believe that it's something that, um, you know, that that is going to be. I, I honestly think it'll be something that people will be reading for a long time, and I want to give them the best possible story I can, even if it goes pushes pushes my boundaries a little bit. Now is Johns is he giving you a really detailed script, or is he giving you some freedom? It's pretty detailed. But, but detailed in the sense that he just gives he gives me what the emotions and what you know the the characters are thinking and 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 then the rest of it's kind of up to me like you know a lot of like like we were just doing a sequence before I came down here where he kind of just give me give me a very brief description of where the scene took place and it's like well so that I, I I kind of bounced ideas back and forth and was trying to figure out like what can we do to you know really push the sequence and push the background and the setting so that it ties in with everything that's going on in the story and so you know he gave me a lot of freedom with that and he pretty much he gave me a couple little things a couple little ideas and it kind of morphed and changed into its own thing but that's kind of how we work normally but he knows his emotions that he wants okay. that's for him that's his most important thing is get the emotional impact correct and so this is what I'm thinking. This is what's going through this character's head right now at this moment. Hold this emotion till we get to this panel over here, you know. And I, I really like that because it helps me to visualize what's going on in the scene as well. Now, are, are you getting like three issues in the can and then it's released or how, how's it working? That's kind of what we want to do. I don't know if I don't know if DC will let us do that, okay. but I want this book to each issue is 50 pages. So it's three 50-page issues. So that's it's taking me a lot longer to draw than what it, I normally would do. But it, I'm also trying to do the best work, not cut any corners on this thing. And so what we would like to have is at least the first two issues done before we solicit it. But uh, may, I would like to have all three done before we solicit it. But I don't know. Um, it's going to, it's, you know... It, Fans got to be a little patient, but I guarantee you when this book comes out, it'll be the talk of comics 
and I think I think it'll be the best work I ever do at DC. Like I don't know after this, I don't really know what could top something like this. It's 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 the kind of story I've always wanted to tell, like a Batman story I've always wanted to tell, and I've always wanted to read. And so it's like I find like to to do that, it's putting some pressure on me. I really feel like I want to deliver the best thing I can, and uh, you know I'm pushing myself, like I said, and and uh, I'm trying to do it quick, but at the same time I want to just do the best job I can. I know it probably varies per day what you're working on. How many pages a day? Can you get a half page day? One page a day average? Yeah, maybe like maybe a half. It's taking like right now I'm doing maybe two to three pages a week. Normally I was doing like five. Usually it's about two a week. So it's taking me a little longer. But I think when people see the pages, they'll understand why. There's a lot going on. A lot of panels. We're kind of telling it in an old older school style and a lot of nine panel grids and six panel grids and this kind of thing. So. You know, it's um, it's going to have a look to it and a feel that's very different, more more similar to what Jeff's been doing on Doomsday Clock, kind of like that old Watchmen Alan Moore style of comic book scripting. But we both really are enjoying that, and and um, yeah, it's it, it's pushing me in ways I never thought I would be pushed, and I'm really enjoying the process. Fantastic! Be sure to visit your local comic book shop, find that book, or actually the the books when they come out. Talk to your local comic book shop retailer about that. Yeah. And I got a question real quick to ask you. I know you're getting ready to head to Tampa, but I know it's somebody actually showing you art. You actually had somebody showing you a portfolio. First of all, does that happen much anymore? I know a number of years ago I used to see that a lot. Is that died down? The interest into the comic book world. Do you see that kind of passion which I saw at your table? Yeah, I, I, I do at least at least once per show or something like that. You'll get you'll get young people coming up and you know bringing their work and I think it's great. I like it. Uh, I I feel I don't I'm never too tough on them because mm. but because a lot of them are younger younger people and they they're just looking for a little bit of like inspiration to kind of help push them. I know I wasn't I wasn't anything spectacular when I was 16. I was still trying to figure out what I even wanted to draw and you know staying away from things that you felt you couldn't draw. And so I always try to just give some positive feedback and and kind of share a little bit about where I came from and the journey I went on and what I did to kind of help push myself further and so I I try to do that I want I want I want people to want to pursue a job in the creative fields because there's a lot of jobs out there parents I think a lot of people don't think there are but everywhere you look there's people like we're here in the shop here and there's you know, there's artwork on all the toy packaging. There's people who were creating all the toys and sculpting them and drawing the designs for them. And there's, you know, in the movies that we watch, there's thousands of artists who are working on these movies and special effects and animation and video games. And, you know, there's not just comics, you know, there's all these different avenues. And so it's good jobs out there. And if you're good at, at what you do, you can you can make a really good living. And, you know, it's hard work. You know, a lot of hours, but deadlines, right? And deadlines, and that can be stressful. But you're, in the end, you're proud of what you do, and and you enjoy it, and uh, and you kind of made a hobby and a passion a reality, and you're getting paid for it. So yeah, that's, that's the best of all the worlds, right yeah, there. Yeah, and it's fun. So now you, I'll let you go. This is like a Columbo thing. One more question, okay? <laughs> I don't know. You're probably too young to know who Columbo was. Okay. You had a mentor. You started very young. You, it wasn't art school really at first. It was a mentoring type of situation. Are the mentors still out there, or is it because the change of the industry? There's, you know, just and the demand on an artist is so much. Are there less mentors now? I, I would probably say yes. I don't know. I like, I think it's kind of different now that you're not really working in a in like a studio environment right okay. like with a whole bunch of people so you don't really have those chances and i know myself i i don't have like a lot of people write me and say like i want to you know i want to to ment like i want you to mentor me it's like well i just don't really have the need or the time for it like it's hard for me to find the time to even mm -hmm. just 
you know, have time with family. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I always just try to give a little bit of a, the nice thing about today with the internet is you can find a lot of things online. If you just look for it, you can find tutorials on how to draw and all this kind of stuff. And then it's up to you. I mean, really it is up to you. Even if you have a mentor, it's up to you to practice. Right? They can only, they can only push you so far. And the rest of it is you have to run that baton across the finish line. So have the passion. Got to have the passion. Yeah, you have to. And you have to be really, you have to have the work ethic. Like, that's the biggest thing. You can have all the talent in the world, but if you don't have a work ethic that says, I'm going to work for 12 hours today and not play video games and not watch movies and not do, you know, like that, that has to be part of it. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, I would say if you can find somebody that can mentor you, who's an artist of any kind, who can just give you some critiques and be truthful, I think that that's a good thing, right. you know. See Jason Fabok anywhere, any place that you have an opportunity. I'm not going to put him on a spot about conventions coming up in 2019. Check him out. We'll have a link to his Instagram account, which is huge, and his other uh, social media as well. You can find that at RileyandKimmy.com. Thank you, Jason, for being on the show. No problem. Thank you. The Riley and Kimmy Show.